Good evening, or whenever time you may be watching this, and welcome. This is the Christmas Eve service of Lessons and Carols at the United Methodist Church of Osceola, Wisconsin, and we are glad that you can join us online this evening for this service. I'm Jack Starr, and I get to be the pastor here, and uh, what a strange year and a strange Christmas season, but that does not that does not in any way undermine our joy at celebrating our Lord's coming to be with us on earth in his glorious incarnation. And so let us begin our service by singing, O come all ye faithful, join us as our choir leads us in this great hymn of Christmas season. It is a blessing to have you with us this evening. Uh, but before we begin our carols, before we begin our lessons, let us join together in a bidding prayer that, um, that calls on our Lord to be present with us now. Join me. Beloved in Christ, this Christmas Eve, it is our duty and our delight to prepare ourselves again to hear the message of the angels and to go in heart and in mind to Bethlehem and to see this thing which has come to pass, this babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us hear again from Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our sin until the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this house of prayer glad with our carols of praise. But first, because this, of all things, would rejoice Jesus' heart. Let us pray to him for the needs of the whole world and all his people, for peace upon the earth he came to save, for love and unity within the one church he did build, 
for goodwill among all peoples, and especially our neighbors in this community in which God has placed us as his witnesses. In particular, at this time, let us remember the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick in body and mind, and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all who do not know the Lord Jesus or who do not love him, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we are forevermore one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the very words that Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us one more time join in lighting the Advent candles as we have been preparing for this evening, for this day of Christ's coming um, through this season of Advent. And so let us begin with a reading from Isaiah chapter 9 beginning with verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and of peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ, our hope. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ, the way. May the word sent from God through the prophets lead us to the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ, our joy. May the joyful promise of your presence, O God, make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And we light this candle as a symbol of the Prince of Peace. May the visitation of your Holy Spirit, O God, make us ready for the coming of Jesus, our hope and joy. O come, O come, Emmanuel. First part of lesson one is Isaiah 9, 2 and 6 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a dark, in a pitch dark land, light has dawned. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. A reading from Isaiah 11, verses 1 through 4. 
A shoot will grow up from the stump of Jesse. A branch will sprout from his roots. The Lord's spirit will rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of planning and strength, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. He will delight in fearing the Lord. He won't judge by appearances nor decide by hearsay. He will judge the needy with righteousness and decide with equity for those who suffer in the land. He will strike the violent with the rod of his mouth. By the breath of his lips, he will kill the wicked. A reading from Micah 5, verses 2 through 5. As for you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, though you are the least significant of Judah's forces, one who is to be a ruler in Israel on my behalf will come out from you. His origin is from remote times, from ancient days. Therefore, he will give them up until the time when she who is in labor gives birth. The rest of his kin will return to the people of Israel. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. They will dwell secure because he will surely become great throughout the earth. He will become one of peace. A reading from Luke 1, 26 through 38. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one. The Lord is with you. She was confused by the words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over Jacob's house forever, 
and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen, since I haven't had relations with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's Son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman, who was labeled unable to conceive, is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Then the angel left her. Verses 39 to 55. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women, and has he blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believes that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Mary said, With all my heart I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone, from one generation to the next who honors as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. 
he has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax list. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary who was promised him, to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. <laughs> Oh 
Nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven, and on earth peace among those who he favors. When the angel returns to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who had heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told.
Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod. Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judea, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you, you will, will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and found them from the, and found out from them from the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you have found him, report to me, so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went, and look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, and they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. Let's join in singing that great hymn, We Three Kings. We'll sing the first and the last verse. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we traverse so far Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star O oh, star of wonder, star of night Star with royal beauty bright, Westward leading, still proceeding, Guide us to thy perfect light. Glorious now, behold him arise, God and King and sacrifice, Alleluia, Alleluia, peals through the earth and skies. O star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, Guide us to thy perfect life. John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came to witness, to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. Now, he himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people, was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. 
and the word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, the glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Glories of his righteousness and wonders, wonders of his love. So, as we draw to the end of this service celebrating Christ's coming, um, we do have to remember that our Lord charges us to continue his work. And so I found um, this wonderful poem by Howard Thurman that... Uh, that I think is a benediction and a charge to us. I invite you to hear this now. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among people, and to make music in the heart. Let the work of Christmas begin. Let's bring it together. Today, there is one more candle to light, the white Christ candle. We put this candle in the center of our Advent wreath because Christ is at the center of our Advent celebration. We have waited with hope for the light of God to shine in our lives, and today we celebrate the fulfillment of that promise. Christ has come to us, bringing salvation. God has come to save us. As we sing Silent Night, let us light this candle. Let us open our hearts and receive with joy our Savior. And as we light the candle here in the sanctuary, I invite you to take the candles that you might have received in the Advent or in the Christmas packets in the past couple of days, and I invite you to light that and place it at the center of your Advent candles at home. And so let us join together in singing Silent Night, Holy Night. Silent night, holy 
night. All is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven afar, heavenly hosts sing alleluia, Christ the Savior is born, Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy With the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy God bless you folks, and have a Merry Christmas.